Welcome to part two of my ZZ tutorial. In this part, I will use a formal definition to assess whether edges are misoriented or oriented or bad or good. So I will use a formal definition to look at the edges, and then I will let you in on some tricks you can use to make the entire process of locating bad edges easier, because ultimately your goal is to find every misoriented edge and orient them. So let's get started with the formal definition. This formal definition comes from my friend Conrad Ryder's website. I will have a link in the description. His formal definition reads like this. An edge is defined as oriented if it can be solved using only R, L, U, and D face turns. If an edge cannot be solved using these face turns, then it is a misoriented or bad edge. This is read just literally from his website and it is certainly very true. If you can solve an edge to its rightful place, say I want to solve this blue and yellow piece to its rightful place, and I can do it using only R, L, U, and D, then it's considered oriented. And if I can't do it, in other words, if it's impossible using only R, L, U, and D, I know it's misoriented. So uh, before we get started in assessing each of the edges, I have to point out that I start with blue front and yellow on top. It's essential that you use a fixed orientation before you start to judge which edge is good or bad, because if you don't, um, then what you start on in the front can influence whether your edge is correct or not. I will give you an example of this uh, after I start assessing these edges. So let's get started. Um, let's talk about the same blue and yellow piece I pointed out earlier. To solve this in its rightful place, all I need is a U prime. You can see that this piece moves from being unsolved to solved in this position. So this edge is considered good because all I needed was a U prime and U prime is allowed because it is considered a U face turn. Let's look at here. This edge has green and orange. It's kind of hard to tell just by looking at it if it's good or not because green and orange is back here, but if you try to work out the moves, you'll soon realize that it's bad because there's no way I could get this edge to its rightful place without doing an F or a B turn. One solution to solve this out of many is F prime and L2. But there is no way I could get this edge to its rightful place only using R, L, U, D. Let's look a look at this one. This one is red and blue. So this red and blue goes here, and R prime is needed to solve it. So this edge is good. And back here, this is red and white. So from this angle, there is no way I could solve this edge without using, for example, B prime and then R. Okay, so now you kind of get the idea of uh, what is good and what is bad using the definition. It's all about using R, L, U, D face turns to solve the edge. Um, to do two more that are really easy, this one is good because you can solve it up like this, and that's L prime, which is allowed. And this is good by the same logic because you can just do R and it's considered solved. Now, let me explain why we have to keep our front face constant. The reason we have to keep our front face constant is because Changing what's on the front can sometimes change whether an edge is good or bad, and you don't want to change in the middle because it will really confuse you and it defeats the purpose in assigning good and bad to the edges. So for example, as I pointed out earlier, this edge was considered good because it could go up here. But if you use orange as the front face, like if you just suddenly changed your mind and was like, oh hey, let me just use orange as the front face, then this becomes impossible to solve using R, L, U, D, because you would have to do an F prime to solve it. This is why it's important to keep the front face constant, because this serves as kind of a basis for what you use to judge whether the edges are correct or not. All right, so now you know this formal definition and how to use it to determine whether the edges are good or bad on the cube. Uh, unfortunately, I have to inform you that this uh, 
formal definition is not very practical for speed solving because there are 12 edges on a cube and using the type of thinking we used to kind of assess each of the 12 edges is way, way, way too much. So to make up for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use some strategies and tricks. I call them rules because they pretty much are rules. Um, there are no exceptions to these rules and they will help you determine which edge is wrong very, very easily because all you need to do is look at certain aspects of each piece and you can look at groups of pieces at once even once you're well practiced. And uh, you'll really know how things actually work in a speed solve following the rules. Um, following these rules will allow you to save time on discovering which edges are bad so you can use the save time to figure out how you're going to make the bad edges good and then ultimately figure out how to place the line because that's where most of the calculation comes from uh, when you inspect the cube not figuring out uh, which of the edges are bad. So uh, without further ado here is rule number one. All right, let's take a look at rule one in greater detail. Rule one states that if I see a yellow or white edge piece on the top face or the bottom face, so if I see a yellow or a white sticker on the top face or bottom face, the edge that contains that sticker is automatically correct. What I'm going to do now is apply the rule to this piece, and then I'm gonna confirm my result with the formal definition, and then I'm going to explain why the rule works. The explanations kind of cool. So, judging by the rule one, I just take a look at this. It's yellow. Good. That's what rule one says. Now, if I were to confirm it with the formal definition, I would have to look at this sticker, and I notice that this is green. So what I have to do is do a U2 to solve this green sticker, like this. It was originally like this, so the solution is U2 away. Okay, so that's confirmation. Both the rule and the formal definition yield the same result. Let's talk about why it works. So why it works revolves around this sticker right here. So earlier we said that this was green and it was a U2 away from being solved, thereby making it a good edge. Let's pretend that this is blue because such an edge actually exists. If this was blue, then the blues would line up and the yellows would still be there and this edge would be solved. And remember, a solved edge is a good edge. Now let's imagine this to be orange. If this was orange, all I need to do is a U-turn, and I would solve this piece. Pretending, of course, that this is orange. Get back to its original position. If I imagined that this was red, all I would need is a U-prime, and we'd be good, because these reds would match and these yellows would match. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter what color this is, it will always match with one of these side colors. Notice that I didn't consider yellow or white because those two combinations don't exist. You can't have a yellow-yellow edge, nor can you have a yellow-white edge. So the only ones left to consider would be blue, red, green, and orange. That's why I consider all of them, and no matter what they are, they are either some sort of U or U2, or they are already solved and don't need to be moved at all. This is why this rule works. You can also apply a similar string of logic to assessing why this rule works. Remember rule one states that if it's white or yellow, that this edge would be correct. In our case, it's white. So in order to tell whether or not this rule works, let's pretend that this is orange. So if this was orange, what would we need to solve it? It is simply a L2. So if this was orange, this would be solved. And if this was any other color that's possible, so blue, red, or green, all we need to do is an L2 and then some sort of D move in order to solve it. So this was the original position. If this was blue, like it actually is, I would need L2D to solve it. Back to the original position. If this was red, 
I would need L2, D2. The same logic applies if it is green. I would need L2, D prime to solve it. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter what the other sticker is, as long as the sticker on the top or the bottom is yellow or white, the edge is automatically correct. Let's move to rule two. All right, let's get into rule two. This explanation will be much shorter than rule one because the way rule two works is related to rule one. Rule two states that if you see white or yellow on the side faces, then the edge containing that yellow or white sticker is automatically bad. So I have purposely placed a bad edge in front of us to take a look at. This one is facing the side because it's not facing up or down, and it is bad for two reasons. One, the rule says so, and two, there is no way I can get this to the solved position. Uh, one sample solution would be F and R prime to solve it. It will be solved, but I used an F, which is not part of what I'm supposed to do if the edge was good, so I could tell it's bad that way. Okay, um, this rule is related to rule one in the sense that rule one said that if the white was here, then it would be good. So you can kind of reason with rule one and flip it and say, okay, well, if white isn't here and it's instead here, then I know this edge is bad. That's how you know that this edge is bad. Also, this edge is also bad because white is facing forward and not up or down. Let's move on to rule three. All right, let's talk about rule three. Uh, I'll be using this cube to describe rule three. Rule three says that if the edge on the top or bottom layer doesn't contain yellow or white, we should be looking at this sticker over here, or this sticker, or this sticker, or that sticker, or the side stickers and not the top we should take a look at the side stickers. If the side sticker contains blue or green, it is automatically wrong. Because blue and green are the front and back faces, so you will need to do, for example, this edge, you will need to do an F in order to solve it. There is no way to solve this edge without resorting to some sort of F, F prime B or B prime. Like that. So let's pretend that this edge was good by flipping it. All right, so what I did was I kind of cheated and I flipped this edge in its place. Now I don't have blue or green facing here. Look what can happen. U prime R prime and the edge is solved. So I just restored it to its original position. So if you're looking around on the top or bottom layer, and you notice that the edge doesn't have yellow or white and instead has a blue or a green on the side sticker, you automatically know that the edge is wrong. Let's take a look at another example. So this time this one's on the bottom because I know in the previous examples I kind of favored edges that were on the top. I did that because it's easy to see, but let's work with the one at the bottom. So this is an edge that you can use rule three to judge. It doesn't have yellow or white, obviously, because it's green and orange. So you'll notice that this, the side facing sticker is green. By rule three, it is automatically wrong because I can't get it to here without doing this. Okay, so this is rule three and it concludes how you look at the edges on the top layer and the bottom layer. From now on, all the other rules will investigate how we look at edges in the middle layer. Here's rule four. All right, let's take a look at rule four. Remember that rule four only applies to the middle layer and not the top and bottom. Okay, only the middle layer. It will not make any sense if you try to apply it to any other layer. 
So the first part of the rule says that any edge that has white or yellow facing front or back is good. So let's check it out using two real life examples. This is in the middle layer, so we know we can apply rule four. This is white. It could be yellow, but it doesn't really matter because white and yellow are lumped in the same kind of category. So this is white and it's facing the front because if I have the blue as the front, I'll be looking straight into this. So this is the front. It's considered good. If you want to confirm that this is good, you can do the moves L, D prime to solve it. I just undid what I did the uh, LD prime. And you can confirm it using the formal rule, but know that any edge that contains white or yellow and has it facing front or back is automatically good. Let's take a look at this edge. Remember that blue is opposite of green, so when I peek back here, this is actually the back face. This edge is facing the back. It's very hard to see on camera because you can't actually see the edge, but it's over here. This white is facing the back. And according to the rule, it's good. So this edge would also be good. The second part of the rule says any edge that has a white or yellow facing the right or left is bad. So this is kind of the opposite of the first part of the rule because if it's not facing front or back, it's going to be facing left or right. One example of a bad edge that we can use the rule on is this one. So this is in the middle layer, so we know the rule is okay. And we see that the white, if we look at it from blue front, the white is facing out here. It is not facing front or back, it is facing to the right. That is why we know that this edge is bad. This is very similar to rules one and two. Um, I just condensed these two rules because they're related and uh, the way we think about them is also related. And I also had to make room for rule five because I don't have six fingers. So um, yeah, I had to condense it for that reason as well. So let's go on to rule five, the last rule. All right, let's take a look at rule five, which is also our last rule. Remember that rule five only applies for the middle edges and it also only applies for edges that don't contain white or yellow. If it does contain white or yellow, it's best to use rule four because rule five will make no sense. All right, so the first part of rule five says that any edge that has blue or green facing front or back is good. I just read the rule. The first part can apply to an edge like this. So this is an edge that doesn't contain white or yellow, and we have green over here. Assuming that we hold blue in the front, like we always do, this green is also facing to the front because I'm looking straight at it. This is how I know that this edge is good. To confirm this using the formal definition, all I need to do is an R2, and you can notice that it's solved. I'll undo the R2. So you can test this out with any sort of edge that doesn't contain white or yellow and has green or blue here. It will always either be solved or go there. Okay, the second part of rule five says that any edge that has blue or green facing the right or the left is bad. This is an example of a bad edge because the blue is facing to the left and that is a bad direction for the blue. In order to solve this to its rightful place, which is here, I need the following moves L prime, U prime, F. I'll show you guys right now. L prime, U prime, F. And even though the piece will be solved, I used an F, which means that this piece is bad. This pretty much concludes the five rules. Um, after this, what I'm going to do is scramble the cube a bunch of times and work over all the rules again. I'm going to point to the edges and tell you guys whether it's good or bad, and I'm going to tell you why and I'm gonna do it for a couple scrambles. So um, if you want to review the edges um, and why they're good or bad and the rules, just flip back a couple minutes. Otherwise, let's start scrambling cubes and looking at the edges. All right, so I'm going to do three quick example edge orientation detections. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna mix up the cube a little bit more in a few seconds and then start pointing to the edges telling you guys whether they're good or bad and offering a brief explanation based on the rules we discussed.
Okay, so let's take a look over here. This is bad because it has green. This is bad because it has green. This is bad because white is facing away or to the side. This is bad because white is facing to the side. So, so far, all four are bad here. This is bad because blue is facing to the side. This is good because it's solved. This is bad because yellow is facing the side. And this is bad because yellow is facing the side. So these are bad for the same reason. This is bad because white is not facing up or bottom. Instead, it's facing outwards. This is good because yellow is here, facing down. Same thing here. And this is good because white is facing down. Okay, so this is good because white is facing up. This is good and this is good for the same reason. Yellow is facing up. This is bad because white is facing to the side. This is bad because green is facing to the side. This is okay. It's good because blue is here. This is okay because blue is here. And this is bad because yellow is facing to the side. Because blue is front, it's the side. This is bad because white is facing the side. This is good because white is down. This is good because yellow is down. And this is good because green is over here. And it could be solved using D and L prime. Okay. All right, so there are 10 wrong edges here. So only two of them will be correct. This one is wrong because white is out. This is okay because white is going up. This is bad because yellow is going to the side. And this is bad because blue is over here. This is bad because white is to the left. This is bad because yellow is to the right. This is bad because blue is to the right. And this is bad because green is to the right. Over here, this is bad because yellow is facing side. It should be facing up or down if it's right. This is bad for the same reason. White is facing the side. This is okay because orange is over here. It would be bad if green was over here, which is the other piece. And this is wrong because yellow is facing to the side. So uh, the way I did this was uh, very quick because I do it every day, many, many times on a daily basis. Um, you can get this quick if you practice a lot of detections. Just mix up your cube and see how it works and try to justify to yourself um, which one is right and which one is wrong. If you have any questions about edge orientation detection, um, perhaps if you, you know, do a scramble and you can't figure out whether an edge is good or not, maybe you can post the scramble and uh, we can work it out together. I'm sure a lot of other people will be commenting on this video. So if you have a tough scramble and you can't tell which is right or wrong, just post a scramble and uh, someone will come talk to you about it. Thanks for watching.